So this video will cover chapter 7, section 4, which is about determining various chemical formulas for uh, different compounds. And whenever a different substance or compound is discovered, they analyze it to determine its uh, percentage composition, like we learned in the last chapter. And then based on this percentage composition, uh, chemists will assign it what is known as an empirical formula. Now the empirical formula, much like a uh, formula unit, has the symbols for a compound, like let's say hydrogen and oxygen, as well as the lowest whole number ratio of their percentage composition. So in this case it would be, in the case of water, it would be 2 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. Now, for most ionic compounds like NaCl, you just use the formula unit because uh, the actual lattice is composed at its most basic form of uh, various connected formula units. However, for some molecular compounds, the empirical formula will differ from the formula unit or the molecular structure. For example, the gas uh, diborane, which has the empirical formula, uh, BH3, when you look at it in nature, it actually has the structure of B2H6. However, because the percentage composition are the same for both of these, due to the ratio between boron and hydrogen in each uh, formula, for empirical units, for the empirical formula, you simply uh, find the greatest common factor of these two numbers and divide by that to get the simplest form to show the ratio between the two elements or more in a, in a So now we're going to do a calculation of an empirical formula and for this we're going to use the example of uh, diborane, which I just talked about. So basically what we're going to do is experimentally find the ratio of hydrogen to boron within this compound. So what you do is you start off with a hypothetical 100 gram sample of diborane and then you take the percent composition of each uh, atom's mass. So for example, boron composes 78.1 percent of the mass of diborane, and hydrogen composes the other 21.9 percent of the mass. And this is just through experimentation. Now, because we use a simple number like a 100 gram sample, this means that boron and hydrogen have uh, sample weights of 78.1 grams and 21.9 grams within this 100 gram sample. Next we use the molar mass as a converting factor to figure out the molar ratio of each element within this 100 gram sample. So if we have 78.1 grams of boron times 1 mole of boron weighs 10.81 grams, you cancel out the units and you end up with 7.22 moles of boron within the sample. And you do the same thing again with hydrogen. So if you take the 21.9 grams times one mole of hydrogen is 1.01 grams, you get 21, 21.7 moles of hydrogen. Now you have to look at these two molar uh, compositions and see which number has the smaller number of moles. That's going to be, it's going to end up being the element that has fewer atoms within the final imperial formula. Now 7.22 is obviously less than 21.7, so what you do is you divide uh, both molar ratios by the smaller of the two numbers. So you take 7.22 and divide it by 7.22 to get uh, one boron, and you do the same thing with uh, hydrogen. 
21.7 divided by 7.22 works out to be 3.01 moles of hydrogen. Now you can see this is pretty close to 3, so we can assume somewhere in rounding we uh, made it so that this would come out just short or just above the answer, which is the correct answer of a 3 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to boron. So now moving on from calculating empirical formulas to molecular formulas. You'll remember that empirical formulas, like this one we have over here, only show the smallest whole number ratio between the various atoms of a compound. However, molecular formulas show the actual uh, structure of a compound. For example, dibrane actually has the structure with two borons and six hydrogens instead of one and three respectively. However, there are some complications uh, because some compounds, such as a uh, ethene, which is C2H4, and C3H6, if you look at the ratio between the atoms in each compound and simplify them, you'll see that they have a 1 to 2 ratio of carbon to hydrogen. However, these two are very different compounds with very different properties. So deciphering them, uh, or differentiating between them rather, uh, you have to use the molecular formula. You can't just use an empirical formula because they are the same for both. What you can do though is use an empirical formula like the ones we have here to figure out the molecular formula of a compound. So if you take a coefficient x and multiply it by the empirical formula, you will end up with the molecular formula. Now, just to give you an example, we'll take the uh, dibarane. Uh, in this instance, you have to double the coefficients of, or the subscripts rather, of the empirical formula to get the molecular formula. So if you distribute this 2 into the two subscripts, you'll get the correct molecular formula. However, in many instances, this number x, the coefficient, is 1. So for example, if you take water, which has an empirical formula of H2O, and then distributes 1 in, you get the accurate molecular formula, which is also just H2O. Now importantly, the formula masses follow this same sort of uh, structure within the equation. So if you take the imperial, empirical rather, uh, formula mass and multiply it by some coefficient, you will get the molecular uh, formula mass. And this structure, which parallels the one down here, makes it very easy to figure out this coefficient x and therefore figure out the proper molecular structure for a uh, molecular compound. Just to give you a quick example of the math it takes to figure out this coefficient x, we can take the empirical mass which we can figure out from the empirical formula of dibarane, for example. So you take the sum of the atomic mass units for each atom, so that's 10.81 plus 3.03. .03. That is 10.81 for the boron, 3.03 .03 for the three hydrogens. And we know from experimentation that dibarane weighs 27.67 amu. Now, if you solve for x, you get 27.67 amu over 13.84 amu. And when you simplify, you figure out that x is a unitless coefficient of 2, which makes sense because as I discussed earlier, dibarane has an empirical formula of BH3, however, its actual molecular formula is B6, or B2 rather, H6.